Hi, my name is Alejo Martinez Sansigre, and I'm going to be your guide in the journey that will start on Earth and will take us all the way to the age of the universe. This is planet Earth, our home, and it is orbiting around the Sun, which is our closest star, and the light from the Sun en enables life to exist on our planet. However, the Earth and the Sun are not alone. Together with the Moon, but also many other planets, they form the solar system in which we live in. The Sun is not the only star. There are many others, and stars come in different colors. Some stars are bluer than the Sun, and they are hotter. Some stars are redder than the Sun, and they are colder. Blue stars have a very short life. So if you see a blue star, or a region with many blue stars, you know that it's relatively young. The Sun, and the solar system, and all these other stars form part of the Milky Way, which is our home galaxy. There's about 200 billion stars in it. The Milky Way has two parts to it. It has a disk and it has a bulge. And you can think of it a, a bit like uh, two fried eggs that you put back to back. The white is a bit like the disk and the two yolks would be like the bulge. And we live in the disk about 25,000 light years away from the center. So you can see that the galaxy is a pretty big thing. Just as there are more stars, not just the Sun, there are more galaxies, not just the Milky Way. Galaxies can sometimes come pretty close. In fact, they can come so close together that they can crash against each other. This collision of galaxies leads to massive destruction. Gravity rips the galaxies apart and stars are flung out. Behind me, you can see a computer simulation of two galaxies colliding. You can see the destruction it causes. The simulation stops and shows us an image of a real collision of galaxies that we have observed with a telescope. And you can see the stunning patterns it forms. But these are very violent events, and it's actually completely changing the shape of the two galaxies. And from these two merging galaxies, a new, more massive galaxy will be formed. Galaxies are not spread uniformly in the universe. They actually follow a pattern much more similar to dewdrops on a spider web. And it's a good analogy because if you're far away, you will only see the water, the droplets, you won't see the spider web. That's the same in the universe. The galaxies are sitting on top of regions of mass that we cannot see. This mass is in a form of exotic matter that does not emit any light. And we know it as dark matter. We don't really know what it is. The dark matter forms a cosmic web and the galaxies sit on top of it. And there are beacons that tell us where this dark matter lies. Some regions have many galaxies, they are very populated, and some, as you can see here, are relatively empty, and we know these as voids. The densest regions in the universe, the ones with most mass, are known as clusters of galaxies. They can have hundreds, they can even have thousands of galaxies in them. They're huge amalgamations of stars and gas and matter. There's so much mass in it that it can visibly bend light. If you have a galaxy sitting behind a cluster of galaxies, there is so much mass, so much matter sitting here, that the light coming towards us gets bent by the matter and distorted. So when we look at a galaxy that is behind a cluster, we will see the image distorted or warped. Behind me is an image of a cluster of galaxies, and you can see arcs. And those arcs are actually the images of galaxies behind that have been distorted by this form of gravitational lensing. If we zoom out even further, the universe is very uniform and it is permeated by a microwave radiation. This cosmic microwave background is the echo of the Big Bang. It is radiation that's coming to us from the epoch when the universe was very, very young. 
So it is showing you what the universe looked like at the very, very early phase. And this allows us a window into how the universe was formed. That light has been traveling to us for 13.8 billion years. And it has come to us all the way from the edge of the visible universe. So we've now done a whole trip all the way from Earth to the edge of the universe.